Tonight's program, Roadside Reflections, um, is put on by photographer Jackson Faulkner. He was originally raised in Detroit and he now resides in Washington State. This relocation has allowed him to connect to our rural roots and preserve them through his unique dramascapes, which he'll be showing to you this evening. Everyone, please help me welcome Mr. Jackson Faulkner. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to see there's so much interest. Um, I want to give you a little bit of background about me. Uh, my dad brought our family from Kansas City to Detroit. Oh, sorry. It's on. I just got to get a, I've got to start eating it. Okay. <laughs> so my dad brought us from uh, Kansas City, Missouri in the early 60s up to Detroit. And so then um, we grew up in Detroit in the mid 60s and absolutely loved it. That was a perfect era because we had Al Kaline, you know, with the Tigers. And uh, my favorite part, though, was going to uh, Detroit Dragway on the weekends. He'd take us to go see the drag races and we just, that's when they had flame burnouts and our and our hair on our skin, uh, you know, on our arms was melted off because we had pit passes and we were 30 feet away from them. It was back in the days when you could do that kind of thing. But anyway, so um, grew up there in that area. We relocated over to the west side. And then uh, fast forward, I met my wife who came out from Washington State over in Grand Rapids, married her. And uh, we went out for one little vacation in February and the weather in Seattle was like 50 degrees for the two weeks that we were there. And I was like, if it's like this in February, we're moving. Because you know what it's like here. And yeah. So anyway, ended up out there. Um, and then within a, a span of time, I raised a family there. Uh, son, two daughters. And uh, over the time, uh, when my mom was about, I don't know, I, when I was about 10, she gave me a 35 millimeter camera, little Yashica, and I just started taking pictures. And the thing is, is now that I look back, she always was stopping and taking pictures of barns along the road, you know, here in, in Michigan. And I think that's where I had a little bit of the, the seed of germination of just loving history, and uh, I've, I've always really loved history. And so I've, I've always taken pictures. Uh, all through my life, but mostly of kids. And if I did take pictures of buildings, I always did it as kind of an architectural study. There'd be like a straight, straight on shot, profile shot. I never really got into it very much. Uh, but three years ago, um, I did. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. It's very emotional for me to um, Think about our history and our ancestors, and I really think that our country and the world in general is forgetting about our past, and we, and we can't do that. So um, <laughs> you'll have to bear with me uh, because this is who I am, and it really is very important for me um, to discuss this. And uh, all right, good. I've got some faithful here. All right, so this will, maybe it'll be easier for me. Anyway. Um, so that's about where I'm at right now. I started taking these pictures about three years ago. And then two years ago, um, our family, uh, we um, had to deal with the loss, the accidental loss of my son, who was 25 years old, uh, Jake. And uh, I'm very grateful that I had this photography down because I've used it as part of my therapy for getting through this. Um, Every one of my images you'll see here has a title and a caption. They're just as important as the image, and sometimes even more so. Um, it's just, uh, it's part of my soul that I'm showing. So anyway, we'll get started on this, and uh, I really hope you enjoy it. And I do, and I do have a little bit of uh, musical background here. I just want to make sure it's not going to drown us out. This is uh, a home down in uh, Oregon, or I should say out in Oregon. There's not a single square wall in this entire house. 
when you stand right here and look up, this peak is about six feet behind you. It's one of the very few houses that I've not gone into <laughs> because I just felt one foot on that and it's down. I really think the only thing holding it up is the square nails that they use to put it together with. Also in Oregon. That's actually the same schoolhouse, treated differently. That's about five miles from my home. I find these places all over the place. This is Eastern Washington. When I took this picture, if you, if you look closely, you see that upper loft door? It's out about four feet. The wind was blowing about 35 miles an hour straight through from the other gable end, and it was that, wind, that, that gate was just hanging. And I mean, you can kind of tell with the uh, grasses there, it was just ripping. That, that was a great day, yeah. This is an old grain elevator that's in a coulee in eastern Washington, and that's as close as I'm going to say where it's at because this thing is over 110 years old, and uh, it's, it's almost, you can't even see it from the highway. And uh, I really don't want to tell anybody where it's at because, I, uh, unfortunately, it's come out. I post on Instagram twice a day. And when, back when I first started posting on there, I would, I would say occasionally where they're at, and I've had more than one place either get vandalized, burned down. It's just, yeah, it's, so I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. Eastern Washington. It is, it is true. I went up there and looked. There, there are artificial, window, or artificial flowers in the window. It's like, wow, really? Okay. It's a schoolhouse in eastern Washington. Yeah, yeah. No, what I, and that's a good point. This, this gentleman asked if this is what you actually saw. And I don't uh, add elements or take elements out. What I may do is, what I try to do is recreate the, the intensity of the color and hue, like when you're seeing it, because, you know, you can take a picture and it never looks the same. So what I will do is maybe adjust hue and contrast or something to give some of the, the feel, well, what I call drama scapes, is to get the drama of like what I, I'm really trying to show what I felt you know, when I was there, and it was an amazing sunset. It is, yes, yep, it's an old schoolhouse. This is about 15 miles from my house, an old abandoned farmhouse. And every year they just pump it out. They're just, it, it's amazing.
Yes, I do. Yeah. You can see a little sliver of the moon up there. Some of you may know Tom Joad, the lead character from uh, Grapes of Wrath, John Steinbeck novel. This blows my mind. <laughs> this, this just blows me away that these are still standing. This is in eastern Washington. I mean, that thing should have fallen years ago. That one's probably about 110. And all they've done, yeah, it's an, it's an old windmill in the pump house from a farm. And the only thing they did was disengage the linkage right there connecting because it's still free spins you know that's an old aero motor you know out of aero motor i should know where that's from it's either indiana or, or illinois the aero motor um, windmill company yeah you can still read it that's uh washington state uh, down by the gorge between washington and oregon And I just viewed the house as, as our blossom, and here I had these nature's blossoms right in front of it. It's fine with me. Do, would people like to have the lights down more for a little more contrast? Okay. As long as you don't fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. So this is my analogy with uh, the Dust Bowl from the 1930s. Some of you may remember the Black Roller of 35. That's when topsoil started lifting up in the plains. And do a Google search for that, Black Roller. And the images you see, they'll, they'll put a chill down your spine. We're, t we're talking topsoil that's a good mile high and 20, 30, 40 miles wide just ripping across the plains and it, and it turned night in or it turned day into night birds all got confused they all fell out of the sky yeah it was pretty pretty intense Washington state eastern washington it is a crop yeah yeah In some of these, the way I do a treatment, I'm, I'm trying to give a homage to uh, the 1930s uh, Depression era photographers like Dorothea Lang, and I'm trying to give a feeling of kind of the Dust Bowl era with some of these. And there, there was a dust storm there. This is in eastern Washington, and uh, we definitely had a cloud like that. This personally is my money shot. If I don't take another picture ever, I am 100% happy with this one. That it was it was the most spectacular clouds that that night. It was just and 45 minutes away from me, which was nice. So Gate. this is on the inside of a uh, farmhouse down in Oregon. And I just found it poignant that when they left, I mean, they latched the gate, you know? <laughs> it's like, and that gate was latched probably 50 years ago, you know? I do. I also do use, I'll give you my biggest cheat, is I use Google Maps Satellite View. And I spend hundreds, and, oh my gosh, by now with my new prescription that I got, thousands of hours scanning at low level, just everywhere. And I've gotten so good at picking out an abandoned building now from, and I just get really excited. And, and now the problem is some places I've gone to, there's been a fire or something and they're gone. And I just, it just guts me. It's like, ah, I missed my chance. So yeah, just keeps me going. That's taken through a, a tire swing. That one. 
Columbia Gorge. Uh, I had to throw in a Halloween shot. I mean, right? It's October. That's in the same general vicinity as the heavens descend. And I think that almost might have been the same night, too. That's uh, eastern Washington over in the Okanagan Valley. Oh, I love Washington State for the clouds. It is absolutely. Oh, that you bring up a good point. If there's, my wife will attest to this. If it's a beautiful sunny day that most photographers are like, yes, let's go out. Me, it's like, no, 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 no clouds. I, I got skunked down in uh, Oregon um, in August. I had planned out a week, and we went there, and I only had a few puny little clouds on a couple days, and I was just... Oh, it was frustrating. Yeah. So the more the more clouds, the better for me. And uh, one thing I will tell you, uh, cars, uh, vehicles, if you've ever seen the movie Cars, the animated movie Cars, you know how they always humanize vehicles. Okay, well, I do the same thing. I mean, they're... They, are, they have souls. I mean, we know that. As, you know, anybody that has old cars, you know they have a soul. And I love Cadillacs. Okay, does anybody know what this one is? Now, I'm not giving you much to look at, but yes, very good, very good. A 59 Lincoln. This one's interesting. There's a story behind this one. This Continental has been on the side of the road for over 40 years because... <laughs> The state will not recognize that the property that it's on is state-owned, and the county says, no, it's not on the county, it's the state. And consequently, no one has ever removed that car. And I'm so grateful. I've got a thousand shots of that car, inside, outside, upside down. That's uh, eastern Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is what I this this technique is called HDR. Some of you've probably heard it. Okay, so it's called high dynamic range. And basically, in a nutshell, what you can do is, if you if you would try to take a shot like this normally with a regular camera, all of that the guts down below there would be so dark you couldn't even see any of it. And then it'd be overexposed where the sky is, and it would just it'd just be a mess. And basically, what you can do is you can balance all the tonal ranges, the highs, the mids, and the lows. And balance them out so you can see all the all the data, all the all the image there, and that's that's basically all I did with that. I just wanted to bring out all of those wonderful little guts there, and the and the shag carpeting. You did you notice the shag carpeting? Yeah, yeah, that's always nice. This is the image I posted the day my son died. Because it's how I how I felt that day. <laughs> There's the Continental again. And look what somebody left in there. <laughs> yeah, I never liked the new math either. No. Yep, exactly. I, I think that's mankind's, probably their most incredible invention they ever came up with. I, I just think that is the most amazingly complex thing. And I think some of the farmers and the engineers that designed that thing are, are some of the greatest minds in the world. That's a threshing machine. Yeah, yeah. But this one just, I just thought this thing looked absolutely prehistoric. I mean, I just thought it was a creature just out on the prowl. Really? Oh, I love it. That's great.
that's a galaxy. That's a Ford Galaxy. And it had a wicked hornet's nest inside. That's as close as I could get to it. Yeah, yeah. And I trudged, oh, good grief, probably half a mile to get to that thing because it's up on a hillside in eastern Washington. And I couldn't get any closer. That was kind of frustrating. Eastern Washington. That, that was just taken in June of this year. And I just thought that was an incredible bouquet that was placed right there in front of it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This is the front view. You're looking over the fenders. The engine is there. And there, all of the wooden parts of that, and maybe some of you people that are a little older than me might know what type it was, but um, it's the, all of the wood components are gone. Yep, there's nothing left. All right, I'm going to believe you. It's a 27 Pontiac. Here's a beautiful old cat, Caterpillar. What I, what I thought was fascinating about this is, oh, it's a little dark. Yep. There still is this garment that was left on the seat there, probably to just keep it dry, you know, and now it's become etched. It's just part of it. So the shot of the interior of that truck uh, that's called Hot Wired, that's the exterior of it. And those clouds were just like that, that day. It, I know you were. <laughs> yep. it, and I was just like, and, wh and what I, what's the most fun is being able to take clouds like that and walk them to what you're trying to take a picture of. You know, and that's kind of what you do. If, if there's a smoke trail and I've got a smoke stack, I'll just kind of walk it over to where it lines up with the stack, and then you have, like, smoke coming out of it. So, yeah, that's, that's a fun part. Really? Oh, lucky man. Lucky man. <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, he was probably cursed at that time. Okay, so a few of you old timers, if you don't mind me calling you old timers, that's a sign of reverence, by the way. Uh, you're going to know what this is. That's a seed gleaner. It is one of the most complex things ever. Look at that. I mean, it's got linkages, belts, chains, wheels, and it has a series of shifting tables that you put the seed in there, and it will, like, shell it. It's... It, they're amazing. I mean, it's 100 years old, you know. It's, and plus, the beautiful thing is, is, that they, is that they would detail them with hand lettering and pinstriping. And I mean, they were just like, oh. so yeah, when I see this, that's just like, yeah, fall down when I see those. And, and what's interesting is I still find those. People, they, they storm away in their outbuildings. They just don't want to get rid of them. That's just a simple concrete post. And yeah, it was kind of tricky because that barbed wire was all around me. It was not, that was not an easy one. I got really wet and dirty on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, now look closely at the detail, at the lettering on there. This one blew me away. This is in Washington State. And every once in a while, I just get a little surprised. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So it says Michigan Fleet, Grand Rapids. And I'm like, wow, how cool is that? That's pretty neat. <laughs> this is just a basic farm implement. No, not, I'm, I'm obsessive about history. I, I love history. So I've got old farm catalogs. The old farm machinery catalogs, when they were brand new, they would put out catalogs of, you could go through them like a Sears Roebuck, and you could order a seed, you know, a seed gleaner. You could order a cultivator. You could do all of it. So, yeah, I know it sounds really boring, but I will spend hours going over those so I can identify them because I, I really do want to know about the history of a lot of these. 
things that I don't know. And some of you may know, this is a real close-up shot. Some of you farmers may know this one. This is uh, it's a manure spreader. It's, it's the rear end of a manure spreader from the side. But I sure love the textures on that. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good one. I need a rim shot. I need a drum kit here. This is one of my favorite places. I got inside an old mill, an old flour mill. It was at least half of an inch thick on that. This is about a 1940s steamroller, close up of one of the wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, very little production of the farm implements out in the West. I'm standing on one end of a 1920s railway car and shooting through it. So the windows are on either side of it, and this is all that's left of it. And it's so beautiful. I've got thousands of shots of that. That What's really interesting about this one is, is that the only safe place to walk is directly down the center here. Everything else is, you can see, that's the grass underneath. It's, there's like not much of a floor left on either side there. Um, oh yes, it was a, yes, it was a 1920s railway car. Yeah, it was a wonderful parlor car. Okay, this one needs a little, this is one of my most popular and loved photos that people really, really like and I do too because it was, a crazy thing that happened. Uh, this is down in uh, Oregon. And uh, I parked outside on the road that's going, oh, sorry, hit the wrong one. It's dark here. I have to whoop, get back to that. Okay. So um, I parked on the road outside. There was, a, there was a fence, I think, and I don't think it had a no trespassing sign. I can't remember now. Anyway, uh, the house I just saw from the outside, and I went, oh, what a beautiful house. I've got to go take some shots of that. At that point, there were no horses anywhere around. So as I started walking towards it, all of a sudden from behind the house come like 10 horses all towards me, and I just freeze. And, yeah, I'm kind of a city boy, so I'm like, okay, I'm not an apple, you know. Uh, so, and my, but my wife is back filming from the safety by the car, and she's hooting it up. And <clears throat> I said, yeah, well, you better record this because the police will probably want to know what happened to me, you know. And so, and they all came right up to me. I mean, nose to nose. And I'm like, I don't have anything. And after a minute or so, they all just kind of parted waves. And, uh, and I was able to walk up to the house. So I get inside the house, and I'm only in there for about two or three minutes, and all of a sudden I start hearing this snorting. And I turn around, and this is what I see in the three windows there. So this guy in the middle, oh, boy, here we go again, sorry. Uh, the guy in the middle, he was the ringleader. I'm convinced he was the ringleader. And uh, because I said, look, guys, I'm only going to be in here a few minutes taking some interior shots, and I'll be outside. You know, and uh, so they kind of hung out there for a few, went away. So I'm in taking pictures, and all of a sudden I hear a bang, 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 bang coming from the front of the house. And I'm like, what is going on here? I go out, and I lean around, and I look out the front door. Kid you not, the one with the blaze there in the center window is sitting there, pounding on the front porch with his hoof, looking in the front door, like, get out of there. Your time's up. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming. So, yeah, that... Yeah, yeah, guard horses, yep, yep, they exist. There, now we can see this one.
Uh, it's in Oregon. It is plaster. Yeah. Similar to this, lath and plaster. This is an old schoolhouse. That's Eastern Washington. More lath than plaster. Washington down by the Columbia Gorge. I always wonder about the families when I get inside these houses. Um, sometimes there's a very benign spirit, and sometimes there's malevolent ones. Sometimes it's nothing. This place was incredibly powerful. This one just blew me away that uh, they essentially walked out of the house and left everything in the house. I mean, bills, clothes, everything. And the moths have done their damage on the fur there, on the collars. This is the remnants of a uh, paper mill in Nuego. Okay, this one's fairly vertigo-inducing. I, I know, I know it is. Um, yes, exactly. This I just uh, took a photo of uh, in August of this year down in Oregon in one of the most remarkable three-story houses um, that's just abandoned in the, in the plains. And I went all the way up to the third story, and this is shot looking over. I really don't want to mess that slide up again. Okay. This is the Newell post, and these are the stairs going down from the stair that I'm on, and I'm looking over the railing at the landing as it curves and then goes down to another level. So that's the, now that everybody's got their stomach upset, well. Yeah, it was very bizarre. I, I was like, I've never seen anything like that. And that was in a barn. I, I really don't know the concept of that. This one is the abandoned uh, state psychiatric hospital um, in uh, Cedar Woolley, Washington. A very, very powerful place to go to. Uh, this one, I think, was, it was a Breckenridge one, which I think was done around the 1920s. And uh, it went into disuse in uh, the late 90s. And this was actually one that they actually put the patients uh, to work for, you know, to help them mentally uh, on like a dairy farm. So they actually, this is part of the, the dairy farm, part of the psychiatric hospital. It was kind of like a work farm. It does, yeah. So we don't anybody else moving out there. It rains all the time. <laughs> uh, it does. I mean, yeah, we get a lot of rain there. And that's, but what's funny is, is you have the mountain range between eastern Washington and western Washington. We're on the green side, the west side. Whenever we go on vacation, we go to the east side, which is the dry side. So that's, that's where you can get something like that on the west side. And then you get that windmill in the middle of a prairie desert just by driving three hours away. It, it's like going back in time. And this is the closest thing you'll ever see of me doing a selfie. That's my head down there. And I, I love finding textures and patterns and colors. It's, um, it's always interesting.
I, I do. I do. Um, I like to... It, it has to be a particular image that I know is going to be strong in using sepia and black and white. If you look through some of my images on the back there, uh, after there, you'll see I have a couple. Um, I, I do it sparingly, but yeah, I do. Uh, this is a uh, work farm, state work farm, um, correctional facility, and this was in one of the cells. Yeah, very. <laughs> I've come across a lot of East Lake hardware in a lot of these old homes, and if you, if any of you remodelers know about e original East Lake hardware that's over 100 years old, it goes for huge bucks. And that, don't get me started because I get really frustrated when I go into these old homes and see where scavengers have come in there and ripped them right out of the doors, and you know they've just uh, gutted the places. So yielding to the elements, this is all about um, places that are gone. Um, um, Eastern Oregon, two years ago, or is it just one year ago, had the most horrendous wildfires. And uh, it ripped through these areas that I had taken pictures of some of these centennial homes, and it devastated them, just totally burned everyone up. The thing that really got to me is, is that they were arson. The, the fires were started by humans. Now this one, this is Mother Nature doing this one. Um, this is right up in uh, the county that I live in, Whatcom County. And we had a windstorm that came in in February and literally blew the gable end out of this barn. And it hit it so hard that it literally knocked the wooden portion of it off the foundation on the south end of the gable. And the owner said, it's gone. He's, he's going to have to tear it down. There, he cannot salvage it. This was a 1932 centennial barn beautiful. And that's Mount Baker in the background on the left. So this is right in my backyard. This is back down in Oregon. All of these images that you see of any of these buildings, uh, these are all burned up. They were all, they were all destroyed. I, you know what I believe this one is? I think this was a smokehouse because that's a very small chimney there at the very top of it, and I think it was a smokehouse. It had a lot of racks on the inside. This is from the same place. And, yeah, it was a stunning sunset. Oh, yeah, with the coyotes in the distance howling and stuff, and I was like, wow, it doesn't get any better than that. I'm so glad I caught this one. I caught this one within two weeks of it just totally collapsing on its own weight. It was, yeah. This, uh, this was the house that just totally gutted me. The people had, this is one of the most photographed uh, abandoned homes in, in the state of Oregon. And uh, yeah, it's gone. It, it literally was just cremated. There was nothing left but ash. The, the fire was so hot. And also one person lost his life. A farmer lost his life trying to dig a fire line. Yes. Yes, you do. Uh, this is a grain mill right in Bellingham, Washington, downtown. It was a grain mill that uh, a transient set fire to in the middle of the night, and it was about 110 years old. And what you're seeing is the interior where the hopper is and some of the, uh, some of the machinery that was up in the second story and some of the elevators for bringing the grain up there. And what was interesting was uh, pigeons had been using it for a roost, and the graffiti artist actually, the city just let them do it. <clears throat> they actually created it into kind of like a bird sanctuary, uh, you know, with graffiti art, which sometimes you got to look at graffiti as not just, you know, 
it's more than just people vandalizing things. Some of these people that do it are incredible artists. Um, but And right there, that weird little anomaly, you see, that's a pigeon trying to find a place to roost. <laughs> it's part of his wing. <clears throat> that's the same house that was burned down. I was fortunate enough to capture that in uh, the middle of winter, uh, about six months before it was gone. Another one knocked down by the windstorm in February. This is one of my favorite ones. It was a beautiful one. That ventilator alone was probably 12 feet tall with the most incredible cow weather vane on top of it. I mean, it was just epic. Yeah, I actually took this picture well before it collapsed, and this was my original caption for it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, now we know the fate. Same house. Yeah, I got kind of infatuated with that one. I mean, the gingerbread trim alone and everything on it. It was, it's, it was just beautiful. The bay windows. There were two fireplaces that, but you see, a lot of these old ones, they actually would have a separate opening in the second story, too, depending on, you know, um, how wealthy the people were when they built it. They could actually have another hearth on the second story. This was late afternoon. Yes, exactly. Yeah, high noon, I don't like. Uh, there's, I, I love the shadow. I love shadow play, and, and uh, those are my favorite times. Mostly in the evening. I'm not a morning person. I don't, <laughs> I don't get up for sunrises too often. Yeah, so, um, yeah, once again, this one just, uh, this one's really powerful. Um, built in 1925. At the cost of $800,000 at that time, which translates to roughly $12 million today. So think of that in 1925. So U.S. Steel put up the majority of the money for that back in 1925. Uh, but unfortunately, if you look at the time span for that church, 50 years, that's small. That's very small. And what do you think might have been the reason that it closed by 1975? because of white flight. So if anybody doesn't know what white flight is, Google it. Basically, it's when an inner city changes out its ethnic mix. So African Americans started moving in. White said, what's going on here? Uh, we don't know. So this is what you see when you get inside. The majority of the roof, these are sections, they've collapsed. Uh, there's still a few there, but you have all this growth on the inside, and you still have got some of the windows there. This is pretty much the closest thing that I've ever come across to a European cathedral, you know, here in the U.S. Uh, this is all Indiana limestone. Every one of those sections there has got both a letter and a number on it. So when they were quarried, it's essentially in a, a gigantic Lego set. They would, they would piece them together, reassemble them, take them apart, reassemble them, they're on site. It's just amazing. I've been going to this church for about 13, 14 years. Uh, since we fly out, we always fly into Chicago. I rent a car there. We go down the south side, stop into Gary, and usually spend the day there. And uh, I love that city, and I love the people there. We've never had an issue, not any year that we've been there. Everybody has been the kindest, friendliest people to us. It's, it's an amazing place, and I, I champion that city. So the latest is, is that they're going to turn it into a ruins garden. They're going to stabilize. They're probably going to remove all of the roof sections 
stabilize the walls and open it up for events like, you know, weddings or whatever, which, you know, I think it's the best thing you can do. There's no way they could save any of it uh, as far as to try to adaptively reuse it for any other kind of purpose than that. And so at least there'll still be the facades there. Um, but the changing seasons, I mean, just have the most incredible um, colors. You know, when you think about all of the uh, births that were there, the marriages that were there, the deaths that were performed, or, you know, the funerals that were performed, it's just, it's a very powerful place. This is the exterior of it. You can see why I like it in the fall. A lot of that is ivy. It's just ivy going through the different changes of the season. It'll go from green into this brilliant crimson. Yeah. After I took this picture and I was looking at it, I went, well, that's pretty remarkable because right in the center there, I mean, to me, it looks like a whole string of, of hearts. Yeah. So in this next picture, I'm going to set it up a little, little bit of backstory. Um, when my son was growing up, one of his favorite words as a teenager, he got into rap music and stuff, was the word word. He'd always... Just say that he'd text it to you, all right, hey, we're going to meet up, word. It's like, okay, yep, means I'll be there, you know, no matter what, I'll be there. I was walking through one of the corridors last year there. I'd never seen this before. It is actually, it's coming back. They actually have a 21st century school directly across the street from it. So you have kids going to school right across from this place. And they are revitalizing a lot of the areas of Gary now, which is really great. I'm really glad to, to see them getting some effort and work done there and uh, restoring a lot of the areas there. And so uh, this is uh, what I'm going to leave you with even around all these thorns. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if anybody has any questions or anything, uh, <laughs> a little fade up would have been nice, but uh, if anybody has any questions, there, there we go. If anybody has any questions, I'd love to answer them for you. Yes? Have you tried keeping the drums alive? My wife is laughing over there because I do. I have a DJI Mavic Pro, and uh, I have started doing it, but I'm, I suffer from OCD, so I'm, I'm so obsessively compulsive about it. I already have a, a short film that I want to do with it about abandoned buildings. And I mean, I've got everything laid out. I mean, doing 360s around it, flying into it, going up the staircase, out the second story window. I mean, I, yeah, doesn't that? I mean, I'm ready for that. 
The problem is, is I haven't figured out how to clone myself yet in order to do all of this photography that I still like to do and the video work as well. But that, that is something I want to work into. Yeah, because it would give me a totally different vantage point too for the still shots too. Yeah, yeah, so that's another one. Yes? You know, yeah, it, it's interesting. If you look through some of my imagery in the back there, I've got a lot of different things. Um, I think people naturally have colors that they just respond to. And blues and greens are really big up on, in my, in, on my level. Um, and I do like doing monochrome, and, and uh, especially if it's, a, if it's a cloudless day, I always desaturate my photos. They get down to almost dark midnight. You'll see that in some of them back there. When you see some of these shots back there where there's hardly any clouds in the sky, you'll see that most of them are very dark. So I, I'm trying to extract some kind of mood out of whatever I'm given on that day. So, yeah. Oh, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. Okay. Um, I do have a Nikon D7100. Okay. I shoot a lot. With a Sam, Sam Yes. With a Samsung 10 plus. Yeah. Um, because a lot of my shots, if you notice, you can't get a DSLR where I'm taking them. You know, I have to dig a hole in the ground, and then I have to get, um, you know, behind the viewfinder. This is really easy to go, boom, like that. And uh, they're getting better and better. And, and in a lot of the situations that I get into, it's not really safe for me to be carrying around three or four thousand dollars worth of camera equipment that people could see. This, it's stealth. You know, I can just, bam, and I've got them. So, so you don't have to have thousands of dollars of equipment to, you know, take pictures. You don't. So, yes. Usually my wife is with me. We always go on our road trips together. I mean, locally, I'll go out on my own, but there have been times, and in, in, boy, if I go to one spot, like the Continental, the car, I can spend an hour or two just on that car, circling around it. So she's got, always has her Russian novels. She has, you know, <laughs> she's well equipped. And she actually has taken like a couple of my, my uh, biopics she took and I didn't even realize she was like behind me taking pictures of me taking pictures so yeah so it's nice it's it's definitely something that both my wife and I do and normally I I will tell her if I've been gone off the road for about an hour or something I'll give her a text or something say I'm still alive <laughs> you know yes okay that's that's not it's not like the cheap construction nowadays. Those things are solid hardwood and they will last the ages. Yeah, yeah. And no, I was not in danger. See, and and by profession, you may find it ironic, or you might go, "Oh, it makes perfect sense." I'm a building official, so I do every I I, ins I inspect buildings, and so I'm I'm going in and out of buildings all the time. So I'm very careful when I go to end a building. That's why I told you that first one there, that's one of the few that I just know. There's no way I'm going into something like that. Yeah, <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Boy, it's almost like I planted you in the audience because uh, what I do is the majority, and, and it's kind of like the reason, and I almost shipped one of them out here um, because roadside reflections, my preferred way of printing them is on aluminum. I print them on metal, and it gives the most incredible vibrancy and luminosity. It's nothing is like it. Now, on some of these photo all the photos that I have here other than the magnets I've printed those on metallic photo paper so it does have a little bit of an iridescent sheen to them when you which you can see in the light when you see them but nothing compares to printing them on aluminum and I have a place that I use and I only use these guys exclusively because they do just incredible work but it's a very complicated process you can't do it in your garage oh okay so for doing for doing that um 
great. Now I'm trying to race through all of the different uh, definitions. Um, dice, yeah, very good. Boy, my wonderful wife. It's it's the dye sublimation process. And so what they do is, is they heat up all of the pigments to a really high temperature. Then they inject them onto the surface of the aluminum in order for them to stick to it. Then they put a UV coating over the top of it. And it, it creates a real durable finish to it. And they come ready to hang. They're, they're great. I have a gallery there in, uh, in Bellingham. And I have a little section in there, along with, other, with 45 other artists. And I've got a little uh, gallery there that I've got all my metal prints in there. So it's fun. Yes, sir. Well, you know, and, and I really didn't get into too much, but it, it really was the whites got very afraid of blacks moving into Chicago, or I mean, sorry, into downtown Gary around there. They got afraid, and they said, we just can't deal with this, and one by one, they all started leaving, and by 1974, there were only 300 members in the church, and at their high period in the late 50s, they had over 3,000. Okay, so the church is so huge, and they had a huge auditorium as well. They couldn't even maintain the heating costs or anything like that, and they only had like 100 people that were actively going to the church, and they finally just said, we're throwing the towel in. We're throwing the towel in. And they, pardon? That was the United Methodist Church. Yeah. The irony is the original pastor that they had there was into diversity, and they actually didn't like him and kicked him out of the church and they got another pastor in that was like about 1927 or something like that which yeah it is what it is that's why some of my captions are just human nature and you know yeah any other questions yes i do i do yeah yeah i i really do it, the, it's kind of funny because I do post on social media, and the problem is is I can't say too much about these places because they just get devastated. People will go in there, and they will just vandalize them, burn them down. It's just it's tragic. I mean, that's why if you, if you ever get on Instagram and, you, and you, you see my feeds, I'll say what state it's in. That's it. I'll never, I'll never be any more detailed than that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm here for the next 5 days. I I'm going to be at a couple uh, at five other libraries and yeah, I've got some targeted areas that I yeah, <laughs> yeah, that I'm going to be going to and some out outside in the outlying areas too. I took 46 over from Nuevo. I'm I'm staying over at my family's house in Nuevo, and I took 46 over and found some great ones on the way. Oh, yeah, that's one I'm planning on going to in the next couple of days, yeah. I've been to it before, but I haven't seen it in, in years, so I don't know where it's at. Oh, did it really? Oh, wow. Oh, seriously? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Yes. Oh, that would be great. I, I need that cloning device. I, I, <laughs> you know, oh, it's driving me crazy. There's so many places I want to go to, you know, and I have just such a limited amount of time. But yeah, that sounds great. Yes, ma'am. Really. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Where where's that at? Is that locally here? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Oh, I love that. Right. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
It's closer for me. Yes. No, no. Oh, the wind turbines. The, the Columbia Gorge between Washington and Oregon is, my wife and I were even commenting when we were down there in June and in, uh, in, in August. I was just shocked at how many had happened in just one year. It was like all of a sudden there was another 40 miles of them running along the whole thing there. And, uh, yeah, it's getting harder and harder. Oh, I didn't even tell you the most amazing thing. with The very first image of the Crooked House, okay, that one is – there is a 200-foot wind turbine directly to the left and directly to the right of it. And, I mean, I have to sit there and frame it so the blades don't come into the shot. So I have to time them. It takes like 300 shots to get one where they're not both in there. I mean, I, don't, I suppose I could edit them out, but I, I really like it's the challenge of getting it because I've got two blades that are, you know, coming on either side. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right in the middle. And that's another thing that I love about what a lot of these farmers have done is rather than tear down these old disused houses, I really, I really think they view them as their own personal cemetery for their forefathers. And they have a respect for, their, for the people that started there. And they're just, let's plow around them, but we're just leaving them there. And I think probably the people that owned the property that gave it over to Bonneville Power to put the ones in there, they probably have a stipulation in there that said, you're not going to tear down those houses. You're going you're gonna to leave them there. Man, I'm so glad they did because I'm able to get shots of them. Yeah. So, anyone else? Well, thank you all very much for coming. Appreciate it.